To help support this channel, please like and subscribe. Hey guys, Tyler here. So I wanted to go over the Alucab Gen 3 tent. I've had it for three years now. I think my other video has been up for like two. So uh, one of the most common questions I get about this thing is how's it holding up? How do you like it after having this much time in it? So uh, I won't waste any of your time. We'll get straight into it. Mine had like paint chips as soon as I got it. It was happening right away. I'd reached out to Alucab. They were going to uh, get a hold of somebody on how to touch it up. They sent me a tube of Sikaflex, uh, Sikaflex. I wasn't really sure what to do with that because it's more like an RTV. I wasn't gonna just smear the whole thing with RTV. My particular paint spots that were chipping, they haven't expanded really. And all I've done is I've taken a black paint pen and just kind of colored over it. it. Seems to last a season. And I don't really care that much as much as somebody else might. I don't have any cracks in mine that I know of. I don't have any issues with mine. There's nothing on the hinges that's had a problem, anything like that. It's like I said, here's some of my paint spots on these rivets is flaked off. I have an understanding that the black is actually a little bit more of a matte black and that this coating issue is no longer a problem. The gas struts are holding up well. Even if one did break on this, I could order one online. What's cool about the Alucab stuff is there's not a huge markup if you do need to buy replacement parts. This tent is incredibly stable in the wind. I've been in some seriously windy situations, stuff that I used to not be able to sleep at all in my past tent, like the flip style tents. Those were just, it felt like the whole thing was gonna blow apart. This, you don't even notice it really. So as far as weather goes, this tent is incredibly stable. I would be very surprised to find that there's another tent on the market that does better than this because of the wedge shape is part of it, but also because it's aluminum. With this particular tent, if you need to get up in the middle of the night because the wind switched directions or something, or you thought it was gonna be blown a different way, this thing you could literally just leave it up and turn your truck around. And then once you're facing the wind, just climb back in and go to bed. You have to pull the ladder off, but that's it. And the ladder attaches so easily that that's not a problem. The rear opening on the tent flaps around a little bit because mine is a Gen 3. The new tents have actually corrected that because you can zip it up and roll it up and then you wouldn't even have that going on. So it's gotten even better. Now I haven't used the 3.1, but it's not a Gen 4, it's a 3.1. So I imagine that uh, it's basically the same shell. They've just updated a few things. And honestly, I'm pretty sure I could update this to a 3.1 by buying new canvas. I'm not totally sure on that, but from what I see, it looks like basically the same body, but with a few modifications. So I did switch out my ladder. I bought a collapsing ladder that's a Tapui ladder, and I had my friend Andrew sew me up a bag for that, and I put it inside the tent. The new Gen 3.1s seem to come with that. So my issue with the ladder was my main issue with the tent, and, I, and now the new ones come with a better ladder or a collapsing ladder. I don't know if it's better. It's probably not as sturdy, but I would rather have a ladder that doesn't risk bending the inside panels on this thing. But the collapsing ones do have their own issues, but it's a better fit for any tent, in my opinion. Some people with these tents have had issues with these latches. I have not had issues with them at all. I did build my own little carabiner system. I wish they came with this like the canopy campers do, but they got to cut costs somewhere. It's just a small thing, but they're easy to build. So I just made little cables with carabiners because I did have a few times that these would pop open. You can see I've got some of my finish coming off right here. That's no fault of Alucab. That's from my CB antenna beating against this. And I should probably get a shorter CB antenna but I just haven't done anything about it. My struts still work great. I pop it up, everything works as it should. I've had no issues with that whatsoever. Again, this is the Gen 3. I'm including some details about the Gen 3.1 because if you're watching this, you're probably considering buying an Alucab and chances are you're gonna end up with a 3.1 since they're the only ones available now. So this is the only part of the tent that would flap around with the wind. There's a lot of tension on this, so it doesn't blow around a lot, but that's one thing with the 3.1 is it's got a zipper here. So what you can do is you can zip the whole thing up, leave it up here, and then you won't have to worry about it at all. So then you wouldn't have anything that's flapping around in the wind because it's unavoidable that if this is set up, this is going to be a little bit of a sale. Something small that I've noticed on mine is I can't quite figure out how to get mine to close like everybody else's does. It's not hard to close. It still is quicker than anybody else I've camped with, but it seems like everybody else, I've tried this down here, I've tried this up here, and then you pull out to get it to collapse. This material seems to stick out a little bit. I'm pretty good about making sure that it's in all the way. But of course, when you're closing these, you never are fully sure. Now mine has developed a few little tiny pinch marks, like it's broken through just slightly. Not a big deal, but it is there. Maybe I need to pull this bungee out and tie it a little bit tighter, and that would handle the whole problem. I just haven't done it. But I have gotten a little material pinched in between this and the bottom of the tent. 
And so anyway, it's not really that big of an issue, but I thought I would note it. What was explained to me by Rin from OK Four Wheel Drive is these post mounts or the uh, rod mounts for this rear awning, they bend out a little bit and it's basically designed to where those will break before everything else breaks. So the way he described it was like a fuse, which is pretty cool. And I had bought some more of those a while back when I had to get some replacement parts for the awning, my fault. But uh, anyway, so it's kind of cool that they design it in that fashion. So if those get pulled up, you can stick new ones on and it won't damage the tent. It'll just damage those. I'm not sure about the tent, but I know with the canopy campers, there's been a few people that have tilted them onto their side and it hardly even damages the camper. They are very strong. So anyway, whenever some of these steel bits get messed up, um, they're fully replaceable, no big deal. No idea if this has been corrected on the Gen 3.1, but on the Gen 3s, these pieces right here that are sitting on your crossbars, those filled with water. And I'm not entirely sure why or how, how that happens. Condensation just finds its way into it. So I drilled little holes in mine. Some people get mad that they had to do that. It's aluminum, it didn't ruin anything and that will probably cause this little channel to breathe a little bit. I probably don't even get condensation in it anymore, but some people were seeing that it was draining on their windshield after a rainstorm or something like that. Climbing onto the inside of this tent, it feels much more like a little home than it does a tent because it is so structurally rigid. Because when the wind's blowing and you have everything zipped up, you really do feel secure in here because it's got dual panels. Um, to an extent, it actually muffles sound. This is a dual walled tent, but it's also like an impregnated canvas. So this stuff is way better than most of the tents that you're gonna buy for 1400 bucks. You know, you're paying a premium for this thing, but it is built to a very high standard. I think the blackout material goes a long way. I've been able to sleep in multiple times with this tent. The downside to that is because it's a black tent or you can get it in silver, but most people don't. Most of them are gonna be black. But uh, the material is dark too, so it's going to absorb a lot of the heat. So whenever you're laying against it in the morning, whatever side the sun's facing will get pretty hot. So that's the one downside, well worth the trade-off in my opinion. For winter camping a couple years ago, I did build a diesel heater into a wolf pack and a, a front runner wolf pack. And I used that with this thing and on low, I mean, this thing got so warm so fast. It's a small tent, but it works incredibly well because these are insulated. Now for the portable air conditioner that I have, for super hot environments. Like when I went to Arkansas, it was miserable. And uh, because I'm used to Colorado cool nights, I wouldn't have been able to sleep very good. Because this is insulated, it worked extremely well. That thing got my tent down to 52 degrees on one of the nights when it was like 85 and super humid outside. And so anyway, it was amazing to have it in this thing. I'm sure it would have cooled down any tent, but this one in particular is going to be much better insulated because it's dual walled it's thicker fabric and it has some insulation on the roof of it. My original review, I talked about how I woke up inside of this tent and me and Natalia and the dog were all breathing really slowly. I'm 100% sure that was a lack of oxygen. I think Al Ucab might've saw that video or maybe somebody else reported the same thing because now on the 3.1, it has a vent at the top. So that should no longer be an issue. So that is really cool. I mean, it hasn't been a concern of mine. One thing people complain about with these tents is how the zipper works. Instead of most tents where it zips around the bottom and it folds up and you roll it up, these fall down. I really do like it. It gives you a little bit more privacy to have the zipper set up like this. So it makes total sense after you've used it for a while. Now the downside of that zipper setup is, it seems like, especially with the topper and stuff that I have, to push the zippers all the way down to bottom them out, it takes a little bit of pushing, a little farther than you would think, because you'll zip it down, it feels like it's done, but you need to push a little farther. And so what happens is this will bunch up at the bottom and you'll have this like rolled up here. But if you don't have that zipper all the way down, it will kind of stretch out next to the zipper. And so now bugs could definitely get in that. But luckily, because the way this tent's set up, the bugs would have to go under this flap over to that zipper and still come in. But it is something to note, and it's only on the side that I get in and out of. So the pockets on these, I've experienced no like excess stress on these to where these aren't bungeed anymore. These are holding up great. Um, I think the new ones have a black material or maybe that's just the canopy campers. And then the new ones also up here have a National Luna light built in. I use a hardcore light that I have and uh, it seems to work pretty good, but I'm sure with the new ones having a light built in, that's much nicer. Before I forget, I have a half inch anti-condensation mat in here. I have the factory mattress that I think is two inches. It might be two and a half inches. And then I have a one inch latex topper. I have a uh, microfiber blanket, a sheet. I have this whoopee here and then two pillows. I put the ladder in here. I keep this fan in here and the poles for this back window. 
and it closes just fine. And uh, I probably wouldn't put much more than that, but uh, just for weight's sake and because um, it's starting to get pretty tight up here, but it does close with that. I wouldn't count on putting a two inch memory foam on top and closing it. I don't think that's gonna work, but uh, this thing does hold a lot. I personally don't wanna have a rooftop tent and then have a bunch of my stuff in the cab because it kind of defeats the purpose, in my opinion, of having just a bed ready to go. If something happened to this tent, would I get another one? Absolutely. This is the best tent on the market. I've seen other companies that are American companies that it's all Chinese built. Um, those companies have aluminum shelled or hard shelled tents that look pretty similar. They try to be the same thing, but they're not the same thing. Keep in mind that I'm recommending a tent brand that I have no affiliation with. There are other tent brands that I know that I could partner with, recommend them to you, and every time you buy one, I get a kickback. The affiliate thing's great for YouTubers. Don't get me wrong, there's plenty of good tents out there. I don't think anybody on the other channels are lying to you about them loving their tent. For me, having a tent that's this durable and this fast to set up is not worth the income that I might get from another brand, if you understand what I'm saying. I'm very confident in the Alucab brand. Everything they build that I've seen has been incredible. So on the next truck, not only am I buying another Alucab product, but I'm buying one of the top Alucab products, the Canopy Camper, that's gonna be three or four times the cost of this thing. So um, I think that's a testament. And again, I'm not getting discounts on this. I'm gonna be paying full price. I paid full price for this, full price for the awning. Some of the Chinese built tents are gonna be great. They're much less expensive. Some of them are almost as expensive as this, but uh, there's plenty of good tents out there. I just don't think that you're gonna to top this for the price point. They're serviceable. If you broke something going down to Mexico, you could have it welded. If it did get cracked because you're doing something crazy, um, it's just, it's an awesome setup. It's super comfortable and it's super secure feeling. I know it's still a tent and um, you know, it's not gonna stop a grizzly bear from getting inside, but it does feel very secure compared to past tents that I've used. And I think that these are the best tents on the market. If something happened and this tent got destroyed, I would absolutely buy another one for the FJ because even when I get the new truck and the new canopy camper, this, this will still be around. I do not plan on getting rid of this. So paint chips and a little bit of material wearing off, those are really the only issues I've had with this. Everything's held up great. I've got the crossbars. I can modify this, put the paddle board on top of this. It's awesome that you can do that. No other tent that I know of is doing that or doing that as well anyway. It's got power running to it. It's really nice. You can run a heated blanket up on the inside of this thing and it's just an awesome tent. They really thought this thing out. I'm sure the 3.1s are great. You can get side awnings built onto them and uh, they have some upgrade options like that. I'll put links below to OK4 Wheel Drive because they're the main importer, but I don't have an affiliation with them. Uh, you can just go there on your own, talk to whoever. You probably have a local dealer, at least within your state that sells them and uh, you might check with them about them if you're looking into getting one. Okay, so that's my long-term review of the Alucab Gen 3 rooftop tent. If you have any questions, drop them below. Check out my other video if you want more details on this thing. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time.